This is my Coilo Stylus Ciliaris. And while she didn't bloom for us this season, I did not have her on my radar because she didn't bloom for us. I just did the normal treatment, the flushing, the fertilizing, you know, as you do in the hopes of blooms, but no blooms. However, she was not due for a repot, but I have three new growths coming three new root systems. That means this pot is not going to cover it to get through the winter safely and then have to wait until this time next year in 2024 to repot her. So what I'm going to do here today is a conventional semi-hydroponic repot that I've done all the time. But as the title of the video and the thumbnail clearly states, I have an open letter to YouTube that I want to read out while I do the cleanup. There are a few things I want to get off my chest and I'm just not getting any answers to these questions. My frustration is evident. So I thought, you know what? They always say, write a letter, get it off your chest, but I want to also read it out. Maybe one day, one day, it'll come to YouTube's attention, maybe not, but you know what? This is what's happening in this video. I hope you stick around and I hope you use the comments to add your opinions if you choose to listen to my letter reading. Now, let's get into my ciliary and get her cleaned up and set ready for the winter so we get some blooms in 2024. Not a broken pot this time. <laughs> it's good to have you here. Thank you for being here, by the way. I appreciate it. I also appreciate your interest. Now I'm going to try and compile this video as best as possible so it all comes together nicely while I fiddle around. And the reason I'm doing it this way, I could have done two videos. I just thought that if you're anything like me, you like seeing orchid roots getting cleaned <laughs> and you like repots. But if you're not that kind of a person, I do have timestamps in the description for anything that is happening with the orchid that has nothing to do with the open letter to YouTube. So feel free to skip around. She is pot bound. <laughs> she did grow two beautiful new growths during the winter, but in the process of doing so, she lost two leaves. So she is a struggler when it comes to my cold temperatures during the winter. We're going to do something about that today because she is going to go into a bigger pot, which will also allow for more media and hopefully increase the insulation around the root system to buffer against those cold temperatures. I did a video on evaporative cooling, the effects of the risks, the dangers, the myths and how to counteract it if you're in a situation where you don't grow in a controlled environment. So if you're interested in that, I'll link that one in the description. In the meantime, same procedure as usual. I'm going to take my orchid out of the pot and then I'll get you in for a closer visual of the root ball as I clean her up, which I will do in silence. And I'm going to add the audio clip of my reading of the letter to YouTube over the top and hopefully I will feel so much better afterwards. And hopefully you will also understand that at my end, I'm trying everything that I can to make sure that the experience on my channel is a pleasant one for everybody involved, not just for me as a creator, because I enjoy doing this, love hearing from you, love the fact that we can be in contact like this, having met you, etc but also for you as a supporter. So a little bit of two things going on with my letter, not just my personal frustrations, but possibly yours as well. So let me get you in a little bit closer. So the details I'm looking for before I start reading, there's a small and large Lekka mix. So I'll respect that. I broke a root tip down there. There's not that much dead to clean up, but I'm gonna take my time because I'm not entirely sure about the timing of the letter. I'm gonna start reading as from this point. Hey, YouTube, it's me, Ninja Orchids. Over here, hey, can you see me? I'm all the way over here in Spain. You know, a country that is part of the EU. The demographic that has millions of people that you don't pay attention to because of the strict cyber laws that you would have to navigate? It's a question which you don't because there are plenty of other demographics that you can promote without the headache of complying to the high standards the EU maps out for internet users of social media platforms. Yes, 
that's where I'm at. And as I'm not able to get your attention, I thought I would send an open letter just because there are a few things I need to get off my chest. Things that have been going on for the last two years since I've been uploading videos. I'm not including the first year because that's a learning curve. But not just things that have been going on for the last two years, but I am going to include things that have not been going on. You probably won't see this either. It won't hit the algorithm either. So it's not as if I'm expecting anything to change, but there comes a point in time when a creator just feels as though it's rules for thee, but not for me or maybe something along those lines. Well, maybe that was the wrong gist of it, but sometimes rants go off on tangents because things have been building up for so long. First of all, whatever I have to say is my opinion and mine only, my experiences as a creator and mine only. I have tried and tried to use your help center tools for every query that I have had and have come up empty. I even ask my questions under your YouTube videos that you post to keep every user of your platform updated. I have read just about everything that your chatbot sends in form of links and it basically is a repeat of what I have looked into before even asking questions directly. So things have been bottling up for a while despite my best intentions to get some answers, to catch a break with you and have your algorithm take notice that my channel exists which when a video does gain a trickle of traction according to the analytics you ding me with the following statement invalid traffic has been noticed in some of your videos so we have limited the amount of ads that are going to be shown on those videos say what after posting 1.5k plus videos at the time of filming every day since April 2020, when I posted my first video, some videos are being picked up by the algorithm and you call it invalid traffic and ding me by deducting ad earnings to the tune of 60 euros in one go and then continue to chip away at what is left every other day to the tune of 5 euros? I just don't get it. Do you know that 60 euros from me is just shy of my monthly grocery budget? Now, I'm not going to sit here crying at the fact that I'm depending on trying to support a form of financial situation by having a channel and being in the YouTube Partner Program. It is what it is. This is my current situation. It has been like this since we had the Global Cooties and I became unemployed. However, to me, this just goes to show that as my channel was not being recommended by your algorithm, when finally a video or two gained traction, you consider it invalid traffic. Proving my point that my videos just weren't getting traction and suddenly <laughs> here we are. Maybe a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel and yet you consider it invalid traffic? So my longest standing question to you is, why was I shadow banned from the jump? Now don't get me wrong, I'm well aware that a new channel has to create content, improve on delivery, make the content something that viewers are interested in, etc, etc. And it is a learning curve. But I can tell you that after a year of posting videos every day, all of the above did improve. And while there is still always room for improvement, there are limitations to how much I can invest back into the channel to make those improvements. Now that has me guessing as to why you have ignored my channel all these years. So forgive me if that is not the real reason and I am not pinpointing the actual correct reason. You see, I have to guess at things because I get no feedback from you. With all the reading I have done to get to the bottom of why my channel is not getting any attention, the one and only reason that makes sense is I am in Europe and in 2020 our stricter cyber laws kicked in and well, the channels in my niche that started at the same time were not given the same opportunities as the channels in my niche located in other demographics where your platform was not asked to comply to strong legislations. Those demographics have seen normal growth with lesser content posted, even, let's say, pirated content to stay diplomatic. You gave channels in those demographics a much wider reach from the get-go, which brings me to the issue I have with what the YouTube Partner Program states about equality, equal opportunity, giving creators a platform that treats everyone the same, no discrimination, etc, etc, etc. Well, from where I'm sat here in Spain, hola! Uh, that is far from reality and it is very upsetting and frustrating, especially when a video does in fact gain traction after three years and you deem it invalid. How does that work? 
oh wait, maybe someone from the outside has an issue with me and is trying to jeopardize my channel by doing some weird shenanigans that go against your terms of service. Now, that could be something that is a possibility because there are bad actors that wish ill against people and do things to channels and these actions are in clear breach of terms of service. So, immediately you assume that it is the creator up to shenanigans and you punish the creator without any thought of other options? That to me is just not right. All my queries about what is going on, who can I address this with, how can we resolve it so that my videos won't be continuously shadow banned, etc. fall on deaf ears. Why? Because I'm sat in Spain, in the EU, and I am a nothing channel to you. Even though you stipulate that all creators have the equal opportunity on your platform and there is no discrimination. The buzzwords are awesome. They are on all onboarding employee training manuals that I have experienced in the past, but in my personal experience, you do discriminate. And then when something starts to move, you eliminate income without any way of a dialogue. Boom, income is slashed. Now, I am aware that I'm not employed by you. I'm an independent contractor. Still, we have a contract and I don't see how you are meeting your promises in the contract based on my location. You are discriminating against channels in Europe that started around during and after 2020. Unless, unless I made a huge mistake by being too honest with regards to my location when I put in the data of my channel. Honest question. It's a question that I've been asking you for years. Seeing as I'm operating and working my channel here in Spain, the EU demographic, you know, the one that you seem irrelevant, <clears throat> and when I joined the YouTube Partner Program, I filled out everything according to my location. What would happen if I changed my location to the USA, but continue operating in Spain? Is that allowed? Would that help my channel get recommended to a broader audience? Or what if I change my location to India, Asia, or Brazil, not asking for a friend, but you know, asking for a friend. I would really like to know if it is okay for me to change my location in my settings, even though I'm not operating my channel in that location while still in the YouTube Partner Program. This question is something I have asked you over and over again, even left it under videos over and over again. I went to Reddit forums to see what others are saying about it, and of course the main question that was asked back was, why would you want to do that? Which is a legit question to be asked because it is a dodgy thing to do. To even think about, it would make you suspicious of being deceitful. And for that reason, I'm not sure how that works. And I would love to know from you what your policy is on that. Does my location affect my agreement with you in the YouTube Partner Program? Can I be in the YouTube Partner Program operating my channel in a location but have my YouTube setting changed to a demographic that is more favorable in your eyes without losing my status of monetization? I have seen it done before and well, those channels grew faster. Yes, they operate their channels in the EU, but their location status is set to the USA. And yes, they are in the YouTube Partner Program. So is that my mistake? Is that something I can change in the settings? Choose a demographic that is more favorable in your eyes? If so, please let me know. <clears throat> Who am I kidding? You won't even know that this video exists, but for the sake of open letter, Please let me know if that is my mistake and I will choose a demographic where my channel stands a chance to at least be exposed to competition and then see how it performs. Right now, I have no comparison. I would really appreciate concise clarification on that question that I've had burning in me for the past years. Thank you so much, YouTube. But I'm not done yet, so bear with me, please. I'm not filibustering here, I promise. Please tell me why you're deleting likes from a video. To my understanding, legitimate likes, isn't it something that you recommend we ask our viewers to do in order to help a video find its way into the algorithm? Isn't that part of what you call engagement? Please like the video. And when they do, poof, after a couple of months, the number of likes drops exponentially. I can understand that maybe someone changed their mind and unliked the video, that can happen. But a single video with a high like count loses likes within 24 hours to the extent that the numbers match a good day for a restaurant that sold a good number of covers. The likes are gone all in one now. Make that make sense, please, because I do not understand those dynamics. And while on the subject of deleting, 
Why do you delete comments from viewers that are not going against any terms of service? Aren't comments another form of engagement to help the video possibly also get into the algorithm? This does not just apply to first-time comments, but some viewers are tenacious enough to keep trying as they generally want to ask something or they generally want to say hi, something encouraging, even third attempts get deleted. Why? Don't you think that this isn't frustrating for the viewer? And guess what? It is frustrating for me as a creator as well to also find out that people have tried to comment without their comments sticking to the comment section. It is disheartening for everyone involved. You see, I do make an effort to reply to every single comment. I do make an effort to make sure that everyone who comments under my videos knows exactly how much I appreciate their support. And I do care that I'm not given the opportunity to respond to comments, even though I am oblivious to the fact that viewers have tried to comment, but then there's just disappeared. They don't know that I don't see their comments, unless it is brought to my attention by them. This is one of the oldest features of YouTube, the comments section. Surely this feature would by now be so solid that there should be no glitches. I mean, you even provide us with the held for review section in case a comment has something in it that we as a creator would not want to see in the public sphere. Why are those comments not even made available there for us to review and approve or disapprove? Why have that awesome feature and it doesn't even do the job? And this does not just apply to the first comments, even replies get deleted. I mean, then you have the feedback feature that we can use to send you screenshots. I always send you screenshots of the comments that point out my first comment was deleted, so I'm trying again. And similar comments. I use your feedback form to inquire as to why comments are being deleted. And if there is a glitch, to kindly let me know so that I can pass the information on to my viewers. Just so that they know that I'm not blasé about their concerns. Not a single form has ever had any response from you. Not a single concern has ever been addressed by you. Oh wait, my bad. I keep forgetting my place on your platform. I keep forgetting that my channel doesn't exist in your eyes. Oh, silly me. But your policy states otherwise, so equal opportunity, no discrimination. Yeah, it all sounds good on paper. And when your employees tell us that in their update videos, it all sounds wonderful. But the truth of the matter is there is no action behind the words. They are empty words. You don't follow through. Maybe if I were to get to a certain subscriber count. Oh, wait. Huh, again, silly me. You don't recommend my videos or you ding videos that are gaining traction as invalid traffic. Yeah, I guess I shall just keep looking at the post-it that I have on my screen that states, stay in your lane and continue making content about the hobby I love for and with people that care to learn, see the ups and downs of the hobby, etc, etc. Maybe I should just take my hopes of being able to support the basic needs of my existence by being part of the YouTube Partner Program with the realization that you're not looking out for the welfare of your creators. Oops, sorry, let me correct that. You pick and choose the creators that you look out for. I have to chuckle though. It's not really a laughing matter, but you know, you know what I mean. When you always say that it is not the amount of subscribers a channel has that makes a difference, instead it is the watch time of videos, the engagement, etc, etc. While that may be true in part, I beg to differ. Because without a substantial subscriber count, you clearly do not have any interest in addressing concerns. There are certain milestones that you implement that we need to reach in order to have some form of communication that isn't just going in one direction. Even removing legit engagement from a small channel. Who cares, right? It may be a glitch. It may not be. Who knows? Who cares? Well, I do. In one way though, your non-discrimination clause proves true though. You even delete comments from channel members of all people. If we were to make a distinction between whose comments get deleted and who doesn't, you do not discriminate there and channel member comments are not safe either. Just wow. These are viewers that see the channel for what it is, even if you don't. But supporters who choose to go above and beyond to support the channel financially by becoming a member, you also delete those comments. I find that appalling. If it weren't for the honor and great relationship I have with Orchid Ninjas, I would not harbor any bad feelings towards them if they were to say, this sucks, I'm canceling my membership. Thankfully though, Orchid Ninjas know that I'm trying to get things sorted out in the background to stop this from happening, and they continue to provide that extra support 
and I could not be more grateful because, wow, if it weren't for them, I would only get paid every two months, seeing as your AdSense is not exactly up there. Which brings me to my next point that I want to address. What is it to you to up the amount of AdSense you pay those of us in the YouTube Partner Program? Yes, you provide us with the platform that we can reach the world. <clears throat> Again, well, some of us, not those of us in Europe that have their location settings actually in Europe, but you give us the opportunity, let's just keep it at that, which is awesome. Not trying to sound ungrateful. And for that opportunity, you take your cut, which is absolutely fair. But I'm in the YouTube Partner Program and not in the Worldwide Donations Are Appreciated Program be it through super thanks or super chats or super stickers or memberships, I am putting my content, my work on your platform. And once having done that, you own it 14 hours later in many, many cases. But you cannot pay me for my time with a respectful amount. I have to depend on the generosity and support of my viewers to help me actually get paid every month because I would otherwise not meet your threshold of 70 euros. You admit to knowing that creators spend a lot of time working on their channels. I can actually quote this, but anyway, you admit that we spend a lot of time working on our channels. You do say that all the time and yet 1K views on a shorts video yields 0.005 cents. How about upping the AdSense as well? I mean, the proportions are extraordinary. I understand your business model, but I'm doing this on your platform. How is it that only donations make the threshold for payments when I'm in partnership with you? I just don't get it. So I'm going to take this moment to address everyone that watches my videos, everyone that comments and takes a moment to like them, even subscribes to the channel if they have not already, to say thank you. It is because of you that my motivation stays up there. It is because of your comments that I'm encouraged that I'm doing the right thing by you. It is because of you that we are building a little community in the shadow of the black hole that YouTube has my channel in. And I cannot express just how grateful I am to you. I'm not going to take away from the fact that because of YouTube, we are here together and I have met you. I will always give credit to YouTube as a platform for being able to do this, hang out with you and geek out over orchids. However, I feel that you, YouTube, you are relying too much on the viewers to support the channels they watch. And these are difficult times for most of the population in the world. And surely you can up your AdSense to help create us out a lot more. Question mark. Based on all the hours we put into our channels, question mark, equipment, upgrade or replacement, etc. question mark. I just cannot imagine that y'all are sitting on all this wealth and expect viewers to do the majority of the support while also taking a percentage off of that. Which again, I have nothing against that. It's the support or the lack thereof from you, YouTube. That is something that is just, it's just non-existent for a channel like mine. And again, I'm only going to speak for myself. Never mind. Let's move on. That being the current reality and well, we have a choice, right? Cancel the partnership and migrate to other platforms. Nobody's forcing me to stay here. Now that's not a threat on my part, but it is happening. It is happening a lot and the competition isn't sleeping either. So while again, I know you won't see this video and hear what I have to say, I'm still going to say it. Consider upping your AdSense. Give your creators a break. It cannot be that much of a financial burden on you. Question mark. Do I sound like I am begging? Question mark. Good, because I am. I am begging you to come our way a little more and I'm not ashamed to express my desperation. There are a few other things that I would like to address, but if I bring those out into the public eye, it is possible that I'm going to make the YouTube experience worse for me. So I'm not going to poke the bear. However, whatever bad actors do in order to try and jeopardize a channel, I am asking you, YouTube, to please not just hit the channel with your policy procedures without prior investigation as to the validity of such actions. Your policy states that mass flagging is an offense, a direct terms of service violation. But when it happens to a channel, you don't wait. You don't allow any time for investigation if the channel was wrongly mass flagged. You just immediately implement your policy and boom. The creator has a difficult time to get things sorted out. 
to get back to focusing on what they are here for, which is to create content and interact with their supporters. The time spent sorting through the quagmire of when you hit us with your policies to when it gets sorted out, it's not only time consuming, but also crippling creativity. So unfortunately, we live in a world of social media and bad actors are out there as keyboard warriors and for whatever reason, they target channels and try to take them down. Help those creators by giving them grace to get back to you on what the actual dispute is which usually is a false allegation before you implement anything that could threaten the channel. I have seen many, many creators ask this in many comments, help centers and forums. So I just wanted to add that into my open letter here as well. For now, these are the most important items on my checklist that I wanted to get off my chest. Thank you, YouTube, and I mean this sincerely for giving me the opportunity to be here on your platform despite my grievances with how things are not progressing. I appreciate being here. Nothing is perfect, things are fluid and evolving all the time, and I get that. I would like to see them actually evolving to the benefit of the creators as well. You speak a lot about maintaining mental health, especially since I've been posting two videos per day for months now. You sent me congrats messages, which also contains a reminder to take care of my mental health. Well, while that is appreciated, the improvements of the grievances that I have expressed in this open letter would be a huge boost to my mental health. The pressure you put your creators under with the expectation that those of us who also watch videos are the main supporters financially, that balance is totally askew. So thank you for your concern regarding my mental health. Please do your part to improve it. I would appreciate that so very much. And should any of that improve, you will have my feedback. You will hear back from me. I will actually update you on how my mental health is doing based on some of the improvements I hope that you will maybe make step by step, not trying to be greedy. I just don't like to be exploited. So thank you very much for your concern. And I'm signing this off with respect, Ninja Orchids. Or you can call me Nina, but I don't think we are at that stage of our relationship. So with respect, Ninja Orchids. And to everyone that is still here while I was cleaning my orchid, thank you. Once again, thank you. If you have any comments regarding what I just read out, please express your take on things because if there is any constructive criticism that I can screenshot and send to YouTube, I will. If there is any constructive criticism you have for me, let's talk. Thank you to the Orchid Ninjas. Thank you to everyone that watches my videos, that likes them, that is trying to help to get me into the algorithm. Thank you so very, very much. As all my videos state at the end, you are all awesome. That looks good enough for me. I am very impressed with the root system. Everything that we did in the previous up pot, which was all that it was, you can see all the roots are viable. And then we have that nice network and then we had an outer perimeter pot. But I always had two growths per year on this one with, as you can see, quite a good root system that comes from it. It's not that happy of a brancher, but at least the roots stay alive. She is not one that dumps her roots, which is awesome for a species orchid. And I always appreciate that in any orchid, but especially a species orchid. This is the first year that I've gotten five growths in the same season. Now, yes, granted, two growths came during the winter moving into spring and I was hoping they would bloom, but she skipped the blooming, whoa. And huh, instead she's coming out with a second lead. I forgive her for not blooming. And now we have three leads on this gorgeous orchid. And now we're going to get a bigger pot. It's going to look ridiculous as per, but for her three new root systems, plus she doesn't dump her root system, as you can see, we're gonna need a bigger pot. Don't know if you saw it while I was cleaning the orchid up. <laughs> These are the last of the lava rock that she had in her when I potted her up first, when she first ever arrived in my collection. Now I've got them out as well. <laughs> and they didn't damage any roots because I left them on every time I worked on her root system. It's inorganic. Don't fuss with the lava rock. If you can leave it on, protect your velamen. Right, now while this is not her ideal mask setup, I have to do some work with her original mask, so this isn't a perfect fit, but for the water, filling the water into the pot, this is gonna do the trick. So I'm not doing a loop with this one, just two microfibers that are going to go into the reservoir and keeping them at their original length. 
I'm going to try and get them up as high as possible so that my dry top layer isn't going to be so radical. So what I'm doing is crocking with large lecker at the bottom, seeing as she was in a mix of large and small. At least I can fill the gap down there with some large lecker and get some of that space filled up without wasting small lecker. Now let's see if I've gauged the height correctly. For the repot, yes, we can always lift her up afterwards. That's awesome. And this orchid clearly has one direction of growth moving forward. While I do like to have my orchids <laughs> in the middle, this is not that kind of a candidate. So she is going right at the back of the pot. And I'm leaving the support out intentionally because now I have enough structures that if I need to use a structure to support another structure, I can always tie them back towards the other pseudobulbs. So we can get rid of that impediment that could poke an eye out. <laughs> if you're a klutz like moi. And what I'm going to do is fill the lecker around the front. So I have her secured in the position that I want her. Just to double check that all the growths have plenty of space also for future years. And implement our third hand. Come sa. So she's gone from a 20 centimeter pot to a 25 centimeter pot. That will give her plenty of years to get adjusted, settle in, increase the root ball, and hopefully bloom for us in 2024. And on top of that, it'll also insulate the roots from the cold temperatures because there's a lot of media around them now. And hopefully she won't struggle through the winter like she did last time. And that is her without her mask. <laughs> that mask still needs some work, as I mentioned. So she's going to just be here. I can flush her through. She can be here on the staging area until the mask is ready. And I just wanted to show you some more collateral damage and why I took this off because this is the origin up here and that's where it was kinking, even though the rest was gorgeous. The weight of the lecker had broken it. So seeing as we've got all this gorgeousness coming up in her future, we're just going to cut our losses and bank on the fact that the old root system is not destroyed, that it's still up running viable doing its job. And with that, the new root system will join it very, very soon. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. I know that the subject isn't always like, you know, here we go, la di da. It's not always a pleasant thing, but in reality, some things needed to be said, in my opinion. If you agree or disagree, please express your opinion in the comments. I'm always open to any form of criticism. As long as it is constructive, I have an open ear. Anything that is insulting, offensive, or rude, of course, I will delete it not YouTube, I will delete it because I'm not going to cultivate that kind of behavior on my channel. Never have, never will. I want to thank you for watching, but not just that. As mentioned in the letter, thank you so, so much for being here, for your support. It is priceless. It means so much. It is encouraging. I am so glad to have met you. Consider giving this video a like, or if it has met with your disapproval, express yourself in a dislike. Dislikes are welcome as long as I can also see why you disliked it. But allow me just to finish off with one more final parting word. You're appreciated. I hope that you know that. I hope that I've got that message across. If you ever have any doubts, <laughs> let me know. I do not want anybody to feel that they are not appreciated. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe because I would love to see you in the next video or any other video that I've already posted on my channel. Take care. Bye.